Hello everyone, thanks again for joining the uh, Lucan Center for Psychotherapy YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited as we're starting our brand new series on emotionally focused therapy. Uh, it's a very exciting time because EFT has been touted as the gold standard of treatment for marriage counseling. Uh, it also has shown an incredible success rate of 80%. That means 8 out of 10 couples that do this type of treatment actually come out with significant improvement. So I have here with me today, Ami patel King, who is an EFT specialist. And what uh, we'd like to do today is just tell you a little bit more about what EFT is like and just really get into the nitty gritty about what is it that makes EFT so effective. So welcome, Ami. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. So let's try to get into this a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about what EFT and... Um, Maybe we can get into the, you know, the specifics of why people, couples specifically, really benefit from this type of treatment. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So EFT, as you said, is emotion-focused therapy. Um, it was developed by Sue Johnson in, um, in an effort to tr really try to understand a better way of dealing with the conflicts that couples get into. Mm -hmm. um, and what a lot of research has <clears throat> empirically proved is that Couples actually get into fairly predictable patterns of interacting mm -hmm. that leads to distance in relationships. Okay. And what are some of the distances that can happen between couples? Yeah. I mean, the, the distance generally comes from um, the difference between what is being shown on the outside and what's going on on the inside, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So on the outside, I might be showing you that I'm pissed off that the dishes aren't done. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 critical because I'm saying, what's wrong with you? You're, the, the, the dishes are never done and mm -hmm. you don't care that I'm talking to you about this every single day. It's the same conflict over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that that's another pattern that comes up often, right? <clears throat> you get frustrated that you're talking about the same thing again and again and again, and mm -hmm. these conflicts aren't getting resolved. Um, and you become stuck. So that's interesting that you say that. So it sounds to me the the way the way at least I'm hearing it is that on the surface the the communication or the argument might be about something you know relatively trivial, but it sounds like it could be triggering some sort of an emotional need that's really not being met. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. We all have um attachment needs that mm -hmm. um that universally need to be met right mm -hmm. in order to be in, in order to feel safe and secure in the world we need mm -hmm. to feel heard understood cared for um uh accepted really valued valued um by our by the people that are closest to us and that really starts with with our um parents or, or caregivers mm -hmm. um in our early childhood and um it it, it you know it it can go into other close relationships like friendships, mm -hmm. um, our first romantic partners, mm -hmm. um, and will eventually translate into your your lifelong partner, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're bringing all of these attachment wounds that mm -hmm. build up over the years into um, any relationship that you that you go mm -hmm. into. That I mean. I really like uh, hearing it. And as you know, I'm a very big EFT proponent myself. It's just what, one thing that I often say to some of the clients that I work with, just to kind of, uh, you know, maybe bring the emotional needs to the surface is that I always say that I think most of us can relate to the idea that we have physical needs, yeah. where I like, for instance, to eat, to sleep, to be intimate. Yeah. But uh, some people kind of miss this idea of emotional needs because it, it's not it, it's not out there, right? You can't like physically consume them. So the idea that we're a social animal that we really yeah. need to feel close. And I really try to highlight the word need, not want, because it is something that makes us human. Yes. And kind of bringing that to the surface, especially between two people in a relationship, is really what EFT is about. Yes, absolutely. It, it, it is an emotional need. And, um, and we're not used to talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. We want to talk about communication skills. We right. want to talk about um, about things being done. We want to talk about what's happening in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, that's probably what's what uh, most couples get frustrated with when they first start EFT therapy because mm -hmm. they want um, they they want tangible goals and they want tangible skills that they can walk away with, feeling like okay, you stop doing this and I'll stop doing this and we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's honestly where. Um, I personally believe EFT is just so much better than other types of um, couples therapy mm -hmm. because 
we're going deeper than that. When we are talking about um, behaviors and um, and actions, mm-hmm. um, we're we're not figuring out what is causing those behaviors right. with, and w- what's going on inside that um, that leads to yelling or withdrawing what leads to that distance that that develops between couples so that's interesting because like it it does really highlight actually the name of it is emotionally focused i always joke with people and say it's kind of type of therapy which is like emotions on steroids because we all all we do is we kind of amp up the feeling we amp up the emotional need we talk about what that might look like we talk about like why would an individual communicate in a particular way and what it triggers for the other person and why would the other person say uh, uh, again sort of like emotionally informed um way and I guess I'm wondering, so once EFT goes through with this idea that we'll look at the content, meaning what the argument is about, yeah. and so what kind of, you know, what happens next? Well, that's really the key. We we don't want to look at the content, at least at us as therapists, sure, right? Sure. A, a couple might come in talking about the content of whatever conflict that they've been having um, over and over and over again, and they're mm-hmm. feeling stuck and they're feeling frustrated. Um and on the outside, that's how that's how it's presenting. Um, our goal is to help the couples, and sometimes even like um, you individually. Mm-hmm. I might be screaming on the outside about something that I feel like my husband needs to do, and mm-hmm. if he does this, I'll just feel better, <laughs> right? right? And right. it's not about that. So as as an EFT therapist, our goal is to try to figure out what's what are what is the internal trigger? What's a message that I'm getting when my husband is not doing this thing that I need him to do? Mm. And what attachment need, what, um, what, or uh, basics, what feeling is happening? It, a secondary emotion might be anger or frustration that it's always paired with a primary emotion. Right. And that is probably hurt, fear, loneliness, disappointment so the way i'm hearing it so secondary is something that we feel maybe on the surface something that comes up something that maybe other people could see so if i'm yelling about the dishes you could really tell that i'm angry about it yep. primary one seems like a little bit more something that's closer almost like to my heart maybe yes. i'm feel, feeling um hurt or maybe i'm feeling uh sad or yes. anxious right? yes. so that's really something that's a little bit more primary that requires potentially the couple or the individual to take a little closer look Yes. of what's happening. And then, of course, even deeper still, we really want to get into this idea, well, what is the emotional need? What's the emotional wound that's really been a pattern in one's life and actually is playing out in a particular relationship? Yes, exactly. Like you said, gotcha. deeper, closer, more vulnerable, right? right. That it, it's that vulnerable emotion. And because it's vulnerable, when relationships have not been safe historically mm-hmm. and now, mm-hmm we can't go there and we often don't even go there with ourselves, right? Mm. We don't let ourselves think about what I was, what, what was I so angry about? What was going on inside? Mm. Um, and that's half the work there. Just, just starting to track that cycle of conflict and track what's going on inside when on the outside we're being presented with certain behaviors. I could totally see that because if you're, if a couple comes in and you know, one of the people in the couple is presenting, let's say in an angry sort of a fashion, I would imagine it takes a little bit of work for that individual to be able to present their actual emotional need and even to go further for their partner who is hearing the loud yelling to actually stop, reflect, and also yes. present, hey, listen, this is what actually is happening to me when you're yelling. Or what is it the actual need that's yes. happening for me that is actually not being met in that moment? There's 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 a lot there, and that's why um at least from my end it seems like emotionally focused is really slowing the whole thing down because you can't have a fast conversation about vulnerability there's a lot of pauses there's a lot of time to introspect just to kind of throw that vulnerability out there i really need to feel heard by you yeah and there's just there's something powerful that happens there yeah yeah if any of my couples are watching this they're i say the words let me slow you down 150 times during a session (laughs) let me just slow you down because that that's exactly what we need right we need to slow down so that we can we can slow down our nervous system Mm. when we're 
fighting for our relationship, the one relationship that matters more than anything else in the world, we go into a primal panic, right? Mm -hmm. Something like the dish is not being done. (laughs) And I keep bringing that up because every couple has a reason for that. (laughs) But something like the dish is not being done is bringing a, uh, it's sending me a message that I have no awareness to. It's not, a. a, we can literally talk about, okay, at five o'clock, do the dishes and then everything will be okay. Right. Is that going to make me feel closer to you? Right. Well, maybe, right. maybe if my attachment need is being met, but if I don't have an awareness of, of that being my attachment need, mm-hmm. it's not going to do anything. That's, exa- that's, that's a really good point because there's also a sense of openness even to receive it because if you're only focusing on the behavior, but emotionally you're not attuned to that emotional need, it's not even going to satiate. Right. That need at all. Right. Yeah. So you just brought up two really important points. Mm-hmm. Um, there are two main blocks to vulnerability. There's mm-hmm. the internal block for my for, for yourself, right? Um, mm-hmm. What comes up when you are trying to to sit with your own mm-hmm. raw, soft, vulnerable emotion. That's mm-hmm. incredibly uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, for for most of us, really. And then. Um, as you just said, once you get to that raw, vulnerable emotion, being able to turn to your partner and express it in a way where your partner is able to hear it, mm-hmm. um, that is, it's, it's incredibly difficult. And that's why slowing everything down mm-hmm. and validating and being able to meet our clients where they are um, allows us to model that support validation and empathy that they might Mm. not be able to show each other yet. Um, And I say yet because I absolutely believe that they, they get there. Amazing. But that's wow. That's what I'm hearing. So it's kind of like a a process for one individual in the couple to attune to the own emotional need, being able to sit with it, Mm -hmm. which kind of could bring up a lot of things for themselves. And then in a vulnerable sort of <clears throat> emotionally focused way to turn to their partner and say, this is what I really need from you. That's that's very vulnerable because the other person has in that power, it seems to me, an enormous amount of power to reflect back in terms of, are they going to hear it? Right. Are they going to say something right. mean? And often are they, not they gonna can't. Hear? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So what happens if I do this work about getting in touch with my need to feel loved mm-hmm. and then I turn to my partner and say something like that? What if the other person is not ready to hear it, can't hear it, had a bad day, doesn't want to hear it? What happens then? That's where we step in and and, and <laughs> validate for them that that makes sense. It makes sense that they're protecting themselves. Oh, the the secondary emotions, these secondary behaviors that we talk about, the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I'm making the distinction between the outside and the inside because I think that's a big part of EFT. Mm-hmm. That outside does make sense because the outside is how we protect ourselves from being hurt by the person that we love the most in the world Mm. so it is okay if your partner isn't able to um validate you and hear you the first time you're able to be vulnerable it's 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 a process and that's why EFT is a experiential therapy (laughs) right isn't it called uh, catching the bullet if i'm not mistaken yes yes somebody's kind of throwing something can't take it in then we step in try to catch it just so that kind of soften the conversation yes exactly soften the conversation and and like i said before mo- model the the validation and empathy that they're not they're not able to to provide their partner yet. Uh, okay so let's maybe do this before we wrap up this interesting conversation what would you say would be the takeaway points for mm-hmm. some of our viewers in terms of we started this conversation as you and i are both big believers in that really eft is the way to go if you're looking for any type of marriage counseling, relationship counseling, uh, as you know, it, it extends into family counseling or now even individual. Yes. What would you like the viewers to take away? What are some of the major points that the viewer can say like, okay, wow, this makes sense. I could see why EFT is so effective. I think the the three main things to expect when you're doing EFT work um, mm-hmm. is the emotion, right? The vulnerable emotion, so vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's okay that blocks come up because that's our that's our protection of ourselves, and mm-hmm. that's that that's that fight or flight mode that we're working with, mm-hmm. and that is us actually fighting for our relationship, not mm-hmm. not necessarily 
you know, not caring about it or, or wanting to leave. Mm-hmm. And, um, and. <laughs> uh, what did we say? Vulnerability. Blocks. Blocks. Oh, and. And um, the attachment needs. Right. Right. Uh, our attachment needs go all the way back to our initial um, attachment relationships, which are our parents or our caregivers um, and into young adulthood to our first uh, romantic relationships. And those are all things that we're bringing to the table when you're when we're working with EFT. Wow. OK, so it's really it seems to me then the, <clears throat> the counseling really focuses on first being able to identify that the couple is coming in, at least on the surface, talking about some behavioral disagreements, Mm -hmm. right? Like first identifying that sort of cycle about how the behavioral interaction goes, slowing it down, allowing the individuals to tap in a lot more into their emotional needs, identifying what those emotional needs are and taking all that and turning to your partner. And as you said, having this vulnerability, about bringing it up, which invariably, invariably starts to bring up some blocks, both for the individual presenting and for the person hearing. So yes. those three big elements is, uh, to your point, is what what I think you and I both believe makes EFT really the one of the more effective treatments out there. Absolutely. So thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit more about what EFT is like. And as I've mentioned in the beginning, this is just one of the first videos in the series. Next time, we'll try to get into even deeper into what EFT is like, what the cycles are like, and how to actually put it into practice. And then obviously, the most exciting part of all this is at the end of the third video is really doing a demonstration. Thanks so much, guys, for uh, viewing. And hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you like what you just saw, please feel free to check out our videos in our library and also hit the subscribe button so you can check out our future videos.